designers. Graphic designers almost always want to put headline or capital letters on all the letters and there's reduced readership and reduced response. I've tested this, it doesn't work nearly as well. So those are two very important points. Now notice this subheadline. look what it says. Leadership in all fields today requires you to be an outstanding public speaker. Is that true? It's true. And we, the reason I write subheadlines like that is if the headline doesn't work the first one very well, we can just switch and make the subheadline another testable headline. But this one worked so well from the beginning that we never tested the subheadline as a headline. Follow me? But it's got to be powerful. Now, notice this P. This P is what's called a drop letter a drop letter. So for years I've been using drop letters because, because selling, and this is a very important point, selling is a sequential process. What kind of a process? Sequential process. It's like seduction. It's a sequential process. If you go to the, a beautiful woman and you say, Hello, my name, my name is Ted Nicholas. Would you like to go away for the weekend with me? You're not supposed to say yes. <laughs> no, 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 most of the time, most of the time, your person who, I'm just kidding, the, the person who you're talking to is not prepared for that com coming on that way. Uh, it's a sequence. I mean, when, you, when you're developing a relationship, you get to know each other, you go out, you talk, etc. So selling is the same kind of a process. I want people ideally to read the headline, read the subheadline, start with the first sentence, and then go through the copy and wind up down in a coupon. Does that mean everybody's going to do it? No. But if you guide the eye graphically that way, you tend to have that kind of result. Now, also, and I'm going to summarize all this so you can put it, it's going to be on one of the, the uh, sections there. Notice the dotted coupon, which is an effective device. Is that thick or thin? Thin. Because the reason that it's thin, now graphic designers like to make a very thick coupon because they get tired of thin coupons. You know, it's like classical, been doing it for years. They want a thick coupon. Well, they want it to look in their minds prettier. But see, you're not interested in pretty. You're interested in sales, aren't you? You're interested in having the highest level of sales. So you want your coupons thin. By the way, the, the number one word in the English language, the most powerful is what? Free? Free trial requests. You never want to include, you know, here's a, another tip for you. You don't, never want to use the word order coupon on an order coupon. You never want to use the word order card on an order card. Never. Because do you like, because here's what happened. A person psychologically, when they order, do you think they're happy about ordering? What do you think? They're spending what? Money. And do you think, order form, do you think they like to fill out forms? Do you like to fill out forms? Even accountants don't like to fill out forms. So I never use the words order form on an order form. I use the words, such words as this, free trial request, free examination certificate, 30 day, three money back guarantee, anything almost except the words order form. Very important psychologically when you're presenting things. All right. A few other things. I thought it was so cool that for years I used the drop P because nobody else is using the drop P in America. I I'm the, one of the biggest space advertisers. Nobody else is using the drop P. So one day, Bethany and I, who's been to Venice? You ever go to Venice? Arguably, a few of you. Great. One of the most romantic, perhaps the most romantic city in the world. Fantastic. And we're there at San Mark Square, 
and we see an exhibit, books from the 15th and 16th century. So we, of course, have to go in and see. We go in and we see these books before, I believe, Gutenberg Press, and we see, what do they have? Drop letters in the 15th century. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know one back that far. So I didn't originate the idea. I'm just, I just use it in advertising. Okay, now, we find that the body copy of any ad, the body copy of any ad, all the body copy, is in what's called a serif typeface. Serif, S-E-R-I-F. The reason is because it's easy to read. Any good magazine or newspaper in the world uses a serif typeface. That's what you want to use in your advertising pieces because it's easier to read. Graphics people, particularly now with computers and all this computerization, they like to use sans serif. They get tired of the classic typefaces, but your customers, most of them are over 40, will be over 40 because they have to spend money and people when they're over 40 tend to have more discretionary income. They're, a lot of them have glasses. It's easier to read a serif typeface. So use serif typefaces always. I've tested both what's called a ragged right and a justified right hand column. In this, in this case, there's both it doesn't make any difference. You can use what you prefer there. Uh, subheads, subheadlines, very important in an ad. A must for leaders. Doesn't a good speech take time to prepare? Doesn't it? Good speech. Put Ronald Reagan's chief speechwriter on your team. Ronald Reagan was known as America's best ever public speaker president. And so his, Aaron Bakshian, his, his uh, speechwriter was the editor, is the editor of this publication. Get important answers to these questions. Enjoy the 100 best quotations for 93. This is when it was introduced. How much is, just, now the, the price then was 97, now it's 397, but how much is just one good speech worth? You know, one good speech can make a career for people. One good speech free trial requests and so forth. The reason those subheads are there for two reasons. One, it breaks up large blocks of copy. And two, it's useful for people with a short attention span who just want to look quickly at the ad, quickly at the subheads, and go to the order form. A lot of people are impatient, so give them the chance and have really good subheads so that they can read the headline, the subheadline, and read those subheads and go right to the order form, they have enough information to buy, don't they? Because the benefits are so strong. So this is what you, and as I mentioned before, uh, you can give yourself a good bit of protection by having a copyright notice, copyright notice. Mal, you would know better than I here in Australia on the copyright laws here. Well, what we, do, what we do in America, we put a copyright in OSC, the year, the, and the company, because it gives, you, it gives you a little bit of what we call common law protection. It's better to have it than not to have it, because you're going to have a lot of people try to rip you off. I have it all the time. I have some of the best, supposedly, the gurus of marketing in America who've never written a piece of copy themselves, some of these guys. I mean, it just drives me nuts. And they use my copy to get clients. They tell them it's their copy. And, Incredible. And so they're ripping me off all the time. And so I don't want to spend all my time in court. So I usually send cease and desist letters. And usually they stop 85, 90% of the time. You're going to have the same. The more successful you are, you're going to have people try to rip you off. I figure, Bethany and I figure, roughly about $2 million a year in unpaid royalties on ripped off copy from me. Because some of these countries, some of the Asian countries, I'm sorry to say, uh, the copyright laws are not very strong at all, so people can, people can uh, get away with too many things. But I don't know about you, but I've spent enough time in court in my life on being on both sides of lawsuits. It's not the most thrilling thing in the world, you know? So I try, I try to balance, unless it's a severe problem, not to do that. But in any case, 
Let's summarize here. So you have this in your notes, so you can refer back to it when you're creating upper and lowercase headlines, serif body typeface, limited use of reverse. I didn't, you remember the second ad that I showed you was the ad with a black background and white letters? That's called reverse. Reverse, I've tested both black uh, with white letters and white background with black letters and white background with black letters pulls much better than black letters with, now graphics people love reverse type, but it doesn't work as well. So uh, work with graphics people that are uh, on the premise that they wanna help you increase your advertising, uh, your revenue. Drop first letter, I mentioned, subheads, the power of them. Caption your photos. Uh, this caption is, wouldn't you like to get this type of reaction on your next presentation, make your next presentation a smashing success with American Speaker? See, these people are giving a standing ovation. I found that picture in a stock photo magazine. The client was so thrilled with the results of the ad that he bought the rights to the picture for like $10,000 or something. And he's you know, been using it ever since. Coupon, I mentioned the coupon, the thin coupon, quotation marks, and the copyright notice. So those are very important elements that you should, and you incorporate in any form of print that you're using anywhere, you can utilize those same principles. My most successful clients that on the internet have, um, are successful offline as well as online. They've taken the online principles and applied them to the internet extremely successfully, and you can do the same thing because the same things that make success, that create success offline, are the same things that create, generally, with a few exceptions, same things that cause success online. Uh, now, I'm gonna give you six subheads that you can use without any copyright uh, problems uh, that you can use any time you write copy. Would that be helpful? Six good subheads. What about you? you? You know, you write all this copy, you write all this copy about all these benefits, and then you put, what about you? Question mark. A full 30-day no-risk trial. Don't hate yourself for missing out. Start right away. A lot of people, you know, they're, they've, they're saying in their minds, geez, I might like to have this, but how, I mean, how, do I have to wait three months? or uh, Start right away. Easy to use, easy to use. And free bonus, free bonus, one of the most underrated. As a matter of fact, what's going on now in the marketing world is an amazing phenomenon. It's, for many, many products, it's almost impossible to be successful unless you add free bonuses. I'll say that again. It's almost impossible to be successful with a lot of products unless you add free bonuses. So you've got to have free bonuses. Very important. The lowest risk form of marketing is via two-step sales. Two-step sales. Does everybody know what two-step sales are? Yes, no? Two-step sales are the, like the ad that I first showed you that I started building my business on. You're asking people to raise their hand. Yeah, I'm interested. Send me more information. And then you send a full-blown sales letter describing all the killer benefits of your product. That's a two-step sale. That's the lowest risk form of marketing because you can normally, you can run limited copy, uh, small ads, online, offline, and test different concepts. Rather than, for example, running a full page ad for a test is normally quite expensive depending on the publication. The goal of the two-step selling technique is to get the prospect to raise their hand, as I just mentioned. In small cases, and in most cases, use small display ads if you're doing this offline, not classified ads. See, a lot of people think, oh my God, I see all these classified ads. If I run classified ads, I've seen people lose hundreds of thousands of dollars 
in classified ad testing because they figure if I run in 200 publications on classified ads, I'm going to have a big success. And they find out that nobody reads the ad because here's the problem. The reason classified ads work only for a limited number is that they are unless re related to your area of interest. See, people reading classified ads in newspapers, for example, tend to be looking for real estate, for cars. Very few newspapers have a business opportunity section. So you put your ad in there for a piece of software, for example, you'll die. Nobody's looking for software in the classified ad section or for your unique niche products. Your prospects are not looking. So, you, so don't waste your money on classified ads. Instead, run, isn't it supposed to go back? Yeah, small display ads. I like small display ads because I can choose the part of the newspaper, for example, that I'm gonna run in. Uh, do you know the mo most read uh, section of any newspaper? Anybody know? Mo the most read part of any newspaper is the entertainment section. So if you want a lot of body, a lot of eyes, and your product is a wide consumer, you might consider the entertainment section. If it's a business-oriented product for executives, investors, you'd go obviously on the business page. And if you're running ads in newspapers, the best day of the week to run, in most cases, all my test show, is Tuesday. Second best day, Thursday. Third best uh, is Sunday. Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Don't run on Monday because people are just starting the week. They're real busy. They tend not to read the newspaper very carefully. Okay, so, but if you have a car-related offer, a real estate-related offer, then the classified ads may be okay for your product. As I mentioned, this is the two-step ad, the first ad that I started with. Okay, the real workhorse of any direct marketer sales arsenal is sales letters. And I'm talking about direct marketer, whether it's online or offline. It's the sales letters that, that you are prepared. You've got to create great sales letters. For best results, let's look at what's traditionally included in a sales letter. A letter an outer envelope, an order form, a business reply envelope, we call them BREs, a lift letter, and a brochure. The last three items do not have to be included. They're all optional. BREs, lift letters, or brochures. Everybody know what a lift letter is? Okay, a lift letter is a letter from another signature other than the main sender of a letter. It's, for example, an expert in your industry, a customer testimonial, your editor, if you're a publisher and you happen to have an editor, whether it's an external or internal editor, it doesn't make any difference. A lift letter, the reason for the word lift is that it very often can lift response because perhaps you add another benefit that's not in the main body of the letter. Don't make the mistake I see a lot of new marketers do. They have a lift letter inside the sales letter that's from the same sender, because then it's confusing. Why is a person putting two letters in the same envelope? See what I mean? If it doesn't make sense, you'll confuse people. I'm gonna show you a few, this, this client's retired too. This client came to me with a failed book written by a Nobel Prize winning author, Dr. Joanna Budvig, or written about a Nobel Prize winning author. And you're looking at the outer envelope front and back at the present at moment. And we agreed to work together and I looked at the book and I did my three by five cards and on something like page 117, I found those two natural foods. Now understand, this is a failed book. 
no sales, fail, flop. So I wrote this sales letter and uh, put, wrote this envelope. Now, you notice on the back of the envelope, there's all those, all those uh, bullet points with uh, referring to a page number. They come from the three by five cards that were not used as headlines or subheadlines. You follow me? And this is how I start, this is how I create the front and back. Now, most people in direct marketing offline don't use the back of envelopes. It's a waste of money not to use the back, and a lot of envelopes wind up on the desk of the prospect, and they don't have a chance to see the front. So having sales copy on the back is extremely useful. You're looking now at the order form. Mail this free trial request today. Oh, I wish I had more time to get into analysis because you could learn so much from, because each of the five uh, bonuses I created too and the titles for the bonuses, which came from other failed books that were in the publisher's inventory. And I, re I changed the titles and made these five bonuses made this an irresistible offer with a double guarantee. And by the way, when you do an order form offline, never ever print on the back of the order form. Because when you print on the back of the order form, your sales go down. This happens to be an A-fold. An A-fold is an order form like this. It's folded like an A, so there's printing here, and printing here, but it's on the same side of the page. Follow me? And in that instance, there's no drop off in response. All right. Are you getting one or two ideas here? <laughs> Good. All right, here is the sales letter itself. I want to show you a few techniques you can use, regardless of the medium that you're involved with online, for example. You can World-renowned doctor, you can prevent. Now, what I needed to do here is to credentialize. Very often in copy, you have to credentialize the individual because I'm making a very bold um, assertion in the headline. That's bold, isn't it? You can prevent and cure cancer simply by eating two natural foods. This is the only audience I've ever spoken before, by the way. Somebody didn't raise their hand and ask me, what are the two natural foods? So you don't want to know, right? Do you want to know? Yes. Okay, the two natural foods are cottage cheese and linseed oil or flaxseed oil. That doctor, she was 93 when this uh, letter was written, discovered that that's a tremendous, and Bethany and I have that a lot in our breakfast uh, program, eating these two natural foods. It actually tastes, it doesn't sound very good, but it tastes very good. Now notice on the upper, you're looking at page one and two of the sales letter. See this? This is one from the three by, remember the three by five cards again? What my graphic designer did very cleverly is put one of the bullet points on top of the, each page because then each, each page has a headline on it. Look, see? Most of the time when you see multiple page letters, you don't have a headline on each page. It's a very clever device that we've used a lot. Do you like it? It's a very simple, but very powerful. Go right through the letter. This is a 16 page sales letter. 16, and a lot of people ask me, that, Ted, do people read all that copy? I don't read, I never read 16 pages. Here's the answer. 16 pages for your, and people ask me, when I sit down, do I sit down to write a 16 page sales letter? And the answer is no. I don't know how many pages it's gonna be. I write as long a story as I need to to tell the complete story. And sometimes that's four pages, two pages, six pages, eight pages, 12 pages. Some of my students Jeff Paul has a 56 page sales letter, 56 pages. He's very successful and his market are certified financial planners, CFPs. Depends on your audience. And now, to my mind, 
a single page sales letter with two boring sentences is too long. And a 16 page letter that describes all the benefits of this marvelous book that's helped so many people with cancer prevention and treatment is just right because it tells the complete story. So I recommend to you that you don't go, it, it pains me when I hear people are gonna have a sales letter that's a certain number of pages. I don't think that's the way to go. I think it's, you write the copy long enough to tell the complete story without a single extra word in it, and that's how long the sales letter should be. So yes, they read it. I look at it this way. If God forbid anything ever happened to Bethany, and I was one of these direct, some of my students have written ads to find the love of their life. They run in magazines because they're real busy with what they do. And so if you wrote an ad describing the ideal partner for you and ran it in a magazine, and you got an answer to that ad, and the answer was, hi, my name is Trixie, and I like moonlight walks on the beach. Would you respond to that, or would you rather have an ad response from somebody that says, hi, my name is Jane Doe, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself, my family, my religious beliefs, what movies that I like to see, how I like to spend my time, the nature of my work, because, and, and, and the person gave you a detailed reply to your ad. Wouldn't you prefer to have that? Because you're interested in the possibility of seeing this person socially. Wouldn't you rather have a complete response? Well, I look at it that way. The person that's interested in this book about cancer treatment and or prevention, they want the whole story. They don't just want a couple of headlines. They want the whole deal. And that's how I look at it, and that's how I approach the writing of the copy. Okay, this is a, what's called a stick letter. One of my clients in the US, his name is Bill Phillips. He started a company called EAS, which became the largest seller of, uh, those of you, any of you who are bodybuilders, you would know EAS. If you go to fitness centers, the EAS products, his company was doing $250 million a year in revenue selling to bodybuilders and, so, and fitness centers. Tremendous business. And he came to me, by the way, his best selling book on the New York Times bestseller list uh, for four and a half years is called Body for Life. I highly recommend it. I helped Bill structure that book and write the chapter titles for the most chapter titles are boring. I wrote them like headlines, and the book is just a phenomenal book. It shows before and after pictures, and it's a great program. So he said to me, I'm very interested in this company uh, called the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Do you know this foundation? And, and I, he said, asked me, do I know anything about it? I said, not a lot. Tell me about it. He said, well, these chronically ill children, and all they want to do, some, a lot of these kids, uh, they don't have a long time to live, and they just want to have something in their lives that maybe you and I would take for granted. What would you charge to write a letter that helps me because I created this documentary and have these people are supposed to reply?